Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, Poligovsky has just played bishop c2. And the move that Nesmetinov played now was rook f7, which is another nice move as preparing rook a f8 in some lines and rook g7 in others is also a type of waiting move to see how white is thinking of defending as he has very few options that don't worsen his position at this stage f takes e5 is still losing for the same reasons as before namely bishop e3 check and um, Poligovsky showed his hand now with king f2 which is threatening rook h1 and the queen trap and uh, thus pretty much forces queen h2 check which in turn forces king e3 which is pinning the f pawn and meaning that the e5 knight is safe where it is for now but black is faced with the continual threat of rook h1 and thus he's encouraged to take decisive action as soon as possible to begin his attack, which Nesmetinov did, which bishop takes d5, which eliminates a key defender in the white position. And c takes d5 is how Poligevsky recaptured, and it's the correct move. If instead queen takes d5, knight b4 is best. Where after queen d1 and rook a f8, the position is objectively equal, but white is under huge pressure, and it would be very hard not to go wrong. Alternatively, and just so we can see some of the danger waiting to be released in the position, if e takes d5, now rook e8 threatening knight takes c4, with double check from the knight and the rook is completely winning for black. d takes c6 is thus totally out of the question, and the best defensive try is bishop e4, but now comes rook f e7 allowing after d takes c6 knight takes c4 check where best play goes b takes c4 and now rook takes e4 check king d2 rook takes e2 check king c1 rook takes b2 with a completely winning attack so all the time white is has to uh, be very careful that he makes the most accurate and best moves um, which Poligevsky did here with c takes d5 and uh, this knight is attacked, and knight b4 is, uh, you know, is the best move and the best square for the knight. And here Poligevsky played rook h1, aiming of course to evict the black queen. And this you know, may seem desirable, but in fact it's a bad defensive blunder. And in actual fact, despite being under significant pressure, white could have defended okay here with either a3 or rook c1 and it was at this moment that Nesmetinov found an amazing move and it's the only move that continues his attack and refutes the, this uh, questionable move rook h1 if you want to try and find it then stop the video now Rook takes f4 is the move which allows his queen to drop for a fierce attack with his remaining pieces. According to some analysts, Nesmetinov had been preparing this combination when he played bishop e6 some five moves earlier, and Poligovsky now may as well take the queen. It's his best hope at defending, but after allowing this move, rook takes f4 with rook h1 his position is in big trouble so uh, rook takes h2 is what he played like the alternatives are worse for example if g takes f4 now bishop takes f4 check forces knight takes f4 to avoid mate but now comes knight takes c2 check where the only move to get out of check is queen takes c2 but now queen takes c2 with a w completely winning game for black and uh, also possible is knight takes f4 after the rook sacrifice but that's a bad blunder because it allows queen takes g3 check where best play goes king e2 bishop takes f4 again with a completely winning attack a queen check is coming next on f3 or g2 with decisive effect so 
Rook takes h2 is one. Poligevsky did play. And uh, now there's a very forcing line. The best play is completely clear. Rook f3, check. The check from the bishop and the rook is uh, the first move in that sequence. Forces king d4. And now, amidst all of this chaos and tension, Nazmetinov played a quiet but decisive move. Again, if you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. Bishop g7 was the move, with the idea of playing simply b5 and then knight e c6, which is going to be mate. Um, because the king will have run out of squares, of course, and you know it was an incredible move and one of several ways to maintain the attack and overall advantage in the position. Another possible move and also winning was c5 check, where after d takes c6 is the only move black can play b5, where knight e takes c6 and mate is threatened. And in actual fact, the only way white can avoid it is with bishop d3, because now he has use of the c3 square. It's not attacked by the rook anymore. So knight e takes c c6 check. King c3 is the only move. And now bishop g7 is a completely winning attack. For example, the best move as given by the engines is king d2. But now rook takes d3 check. King e1, rook takes d1 check. King takes d1 bishop takes b2 and black has won back his invested material with interest and is going into a winning end game but with uh, Nazmetinov's move bishop g7 uh, what he's hoping for is mate and not a drawn out end game and Poligeski has seen the danger of b5 here and he came to the conclusion that a4 was a necessary move in order to defend and it's the move that he played but in actual fact it's a blunder and it allows a forced mate in eight moves that Nazmetinov found better but still losing was knight g1 attacking the rook where best play goes rook takes g3 again threatening b5 and a mating attack and thus forcing knight e2 now rook f3 and knight g1 is a slight repetition but only now after removing white's g pawn is knight e d3 with discovered check from the rook winning for black king c4 is forced if instead e5 now bishop takes e5 check is winning because after the only move king c4 rook f4 check is possible because the g pawn has been taken and you know if black hadn't taken it before undergoing this attack then the e5 pawn sacrifice would have allowed white to defend so it's uh, you know a line that requires accuracy and here black is winning easily with a forcing line that in fact turns out to be mate in 16 from this position bishop d4 is the only move to avoid mate but now of course rook takes d4 check well immediate mate I mean and now king c3 and knight takes d5 check king d2 again the only move bishop f4 check king e2 once more forced and now the crushing rook e8 check again forcing king f1 where after knight e3 check and uh, king e2 white is losing his queen but that's the least of his worries after knight takes d1 it's a check from the rook there's no uh, king takes d1 or knight b2 is mate so white is again forced to play king f1 after which knight e3 check forces king e2 and now knight takes c2 check and white is two pieces down and dropping more in the meantime and there's no way to avoid mate in a maximum of seven moves from uh, this position so that defense is no good so uh, we can go back now to king c4 instead of e5 which is what we just saw but uh, next would come knight takes b2 check forces king takes b4 and now bishop c3 check it gives white only one move which is king a3 and now b5 threatening b4 which is mate and forces white to give up his material advantage and 
and more in order to save the game. His best hope is queen d4. If instead b4, black is winning with a5. For example, bishop a4 is given as best by the engines, although it doesn't look too hot. a takes b4 check, king b3, b takes a4 check, king c2, b3 check, a takes b3, a takes b3 check, king takes b3, rook b8 check, king c2, knight takes d1, knight takes f3, bishop takes a1. It's uh, winning for black. So queen d4 appears to be better, but now of course just bishop takes d4. As knight takes f3, but now bishop c3 forces b4 to avoid mate. And now knight c4 check. Again forces king b3, but bishop takes a1. And black is winning the end game easily. Okay, so let's go back to the move that Podigevsky did play. Which was after bishop g7, a4. And, uh, well, it seems that there's no defense after bishop g7. Uh, from here, Nazmetinov has a mate in 8, which, you know, he found with a c5 check. It's a very nice and accurate play from Nazmetinov. If you want to try and find the force mate, it's now from 7, then you can stop the video now. It's um, fairly complicated, but it's the line is concrete, so... Uh, if you want a good challenge, you can try that now. But uh, we'll continue anyway. Um, after the c5 check, white has only one move, which is d takes c6, and now comes b takes c6, which is threatening c5, which is mate. And uh, bishop d3 is the best move to try and defend, because uh, this gives the king c3 square because uh, it's no longer attacked by the rook as we saw in that previous variation but now comes knight e takes d3 with discovered check from the bishop um, king c4 is best it's one of two moves, the other one is mate in two but white is still getting mated with the forcing line d5 check e takes d5, there's no other move, so c takes d5 check king b5 is again the only move but now comes rook b8 check Again, forcing king a5, and after knight c6 check, Podigevsky finally resigned, seeing that there was no way to avoid mate. He only has one move here, which is king a6, and black has a choice of rook b6, knight b, sorry, uh, yeah, knight b, d4, and um, knight c5 to give main and um, so you know it was an absolutely incredible game from Nezmetdinov and almost certainly his most famous victory and an incredibly complex game and one that certainly belongs in the top 10 of all time and I'd like to give credit to life master AJ Goldsby whose analysis I used for some of the vari variations I mentioned here we've got a bit of time left so we can um, have a replay with the threatened squares on and we can see it from Podigevsky's point of view so uh, you know we can try and have a feeling of what it's like to face an attack from this great player Nezmetdinov who as I said he never got to become a grandmaster he was I think he was enlisted in uh, the Soviet army and it's said that in chess and in travels he only got as far as Germany, I believe it was, but that was as a soldier and not as a chess player. In the picture on chess games, he's uh, wearing a soldier's outfit and uh, he looks like a pretty serious guy. And, uh, you know, he was just a fantastic player. He had wins against all the greatest players of the day. And as you can see here, um, he was just a fearsome attacker when he had the initiative. He's also a brilliant checkers player, and one of his only weaknesses was that he uh, thrived too much on the initiative when he was faced with playing weaker players, or not weaker players, sorry, but more defensive players like Petrosian and Korchnoi. He would uh, get impatient with the fact that he couldn't penetrate their defense and um, spoil his position as a result, at least according to Wikipedia. It's a fantastic conception here with the white king 
guess you're just getting ambushed on all sides after this fantastic queen sacrifice from Nazmetanov. So that's it, a fantastic game, as I said, from Nazmetanov, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.